What's up, Austin? <laughs> Uh, we're talking to uh, filmmaker and FilmWax regular, <laughs> Jeremy Workman. I've been on FilmWax a, a few times now. I always love it, and I want to do more. So, you know, keep keep calling me. I love having you on. Yeah. The last time we were on was just a couple weeks ago, but I think that the, the, the podcast, you know, dropped last week, which was we did a, a real, like a group chat um, with me, Rong Real, Chico Leo, you, about the films of, of the great Paul Schrader. So it was not so much about, you know, my films or a specific film. It was more just an appreciation of a director, which is was really cool and, and uh, fun to do. So, but now, um, as you know, we even talked about it on that podcast that I have a documentary that's premiering here at South by. So now we're I'm seeing you in Texas. Now everybody's brought up to date, um, but I I want also we also. Quasi coincidentally, we're able or hope to use that as a way of hooking Schrader to do the podcast because he has a new film and it's even going to play here. I'll be gone by then. You will be here, but I maybe will. I need you to go and do my, you know, my bidding. I will, you if know, you accost him and try to get him for you. Okay, um, but we'll we'll do our best. But now we have something we can hold in front. If if Lee, Chico Lee only didn't trash Schrader movies the entire time, <laughs> I'd feel more confident that it was useful. Yes. So hopefully they won't listen. Actually, listen to the podcast. right. He won't listen because the, almost the first words out of the mouth are were I I did. Yeah. Because we we started the episode and I was saying it's on this particular movie. I mean, he, you asked me at the very beginning of this podcast about this uh, filmmaker Paul Schrader. He says. Did you see this movie, particular movie? And I said, it's unwatchable. Now, if Paul Schrader should listen, at the very few seconds, he could turn off the, the podcast because he'll know we, we're not but always... But we really covered his career in a yeah. neat way. And right. it, it was a real appreciation. So, you know, uh, and we deep-dived. And it was cool to, to do a podcast where we deep-dived like that on yeah. Film Wax. I know you don't always do that, but it, it was actually a lot of fun. It was, and I would do it more frequently, but now there are these other podcasts that do it. So, so. Yeah. Anyway, my, my, the more typical one is, is what we're doing here, which is to talk about a new documentary. It had its world premiere at South by Southwest. It's called The World Before Your Feet. And, uh, and how, many do, how many films have you made, Jeremy? This is how I many I guess features? this would be, you know... Your third uh, or fourth? Yeah, kind of fourth feature. Okay. Um, yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, the last one, you had me on for my last feature, which was Magical Universe, right. and, uh, which we IFC know. released, and that was the first time we did Vim Film Wax, and right. we've done a few since. Right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I guess third or fourth, yeah, okay. because one is How a short you know? that was turned oh. into a compilation. Oh, you know. yeah, yeah. That, that's true, right, yeah. which we did a podcast we about did. that, too. We did, we did. All right. Um, and I'm we're a popular guest. Jeremy, you are. I like having a little community, I told you, around the podcast. It's nice to be able to bring people on that you know that i'm not feuding with and <laughs> matt green you're the subject of this new film yeah documentary what's our feud going to be about no we're going to be feud we're in a feud free zone here okay, oh, okay. that's what this is about oh here. wow okay that was smart to yeah. this interview. you know it's funny uh i loved long walks too but i mean i'm i'm, I'm not even going to not not only not compare myself in any way, but I I do have an appreciation for the Zen of the level that and the, and the experience that you that comes up in the film and that I I, I interpreted from the film. Um, I think one thing I did once was a walk around Central Park, the entirety of Central Park. Now, so it's close to what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, um, it's a place in New York, but it was very hot day. day. It was you a very you hot schwitzed. day. I schwitzed like a motherfucker. Fair for Mother Frumper. That's a lot of yeah. <laughs> yeah, that really is. That's one of the types of people that Schwitz is the most. But what it was also what I liked about you, your your experience, and I promise to stop talking, is that um, there was also you had this whole level of, of uh, exploration, well, a, of, of research, and that you did uh, observational experience. It was an observational experience. You talked to people. You uh, researched things, as I said, uh, etc. So it wasn't. It took. As, it's taking as long as it does because you also were also doing this. You were just walking, right? Definitely, yeah. So yeah, my website name is I'm just walking, and then I'm not just walking, as it turns out. Um, yeah. So the the when I started this walk in New York, I was just kind of. I'm like, oh, I'll walk every block. I'll take a bunch of photos, and I'll post them real quick at the end of the day. And then I just over time started realizing. All these things I was photographing, and I didn't know what they were. 
you can find out what those things are in New York because of the wealth of information that has now been scanned in. You know, it's available online. You can do text searches of. Right. You can look through old maps. You can look at old aerial photographs. I mean, there's there's such a wealth of information to to answer so many of the questions that come up when mm -hmm. you're walking around. So yeah, it's it has very quickly gone from just walking to not just walking. Okay. There's so much to ask. Um, I want to know from your background and your life, Matt, as well as the genesis of the film and why you agreed to do it and just how much walking took place during the, the film. So, Jeremy, w let's take a step back uh, uh, even further and tell me about what, what Matt is doing. I know, uh, for one thing, you did a walk across... America. Yeah, walk across the U.S. You you walked right across the country from Rockaway Beach to Rockaway Beach. Yeah, New York to Oregon. Right. There's two of these Rockaway beaches, right? At least two. At least, right, of course. Uh, so, Jer Jeremy, when did you, uh, well, okay, how did you find Matt? Uh, Matt and I have been friends for about, a, you know, 10 years or so. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've been friends for a long time. It was funny because... Um, uh, a film I made that w was through your podcast was a short documentary I made called One Track Mine, which was part of the True New York compilation, right? So that was actually um, how Matt and I met. He um, reached out to me after kind of interested in the subject of that film, which was a subway, uh, extreme subway obsessive. <laughs> so that was a good 10 years ago. And then Matt and I became friends uh, good friends, and uh, just no. how'd what's that? How'd you meet? How did I meet Matt? Yeah, that way, where Matt reached okay. out to me out of the blue oh, after you, seeing that, that film short. Okay. and wanted to um, wanted to connect with the subject of that short. Uh, did you, Matt? Did you end up me uh, meeting? Uh, what was his name? His name's Phil Cop or uh -huh. Coppola. Coppola is, yeah. is his, uh, I guess, family name. Um, yeah, we, so he, we were, uh, a friend and I basically were planning this mystery bus tour, mm -hmm. which basically involved people uh, signing up for the tour. They are told what time to show up and where, and they get That's on a it. bus and you That's take it. them wherever the hell you want. Right. And so we kind of hit on this theme of like, let's go visit a lot of people doing these, you know, very intense personal kind of quests, right. personal missions. And in brainstorming for that, I, I remembered this movie I had seen on PBS maybe two years before or something about this guy documenting painstakingly all this artwork in the New York City subways, the history okay. of the subways. And, and so, yeah, I was like, maybe this guy could be part of the tour. So basically found Jeremy's website, wrote to him. We all met up. We all became friends. And now we, you know, once or twice a year go out to New Jersey and have a big lunch with Phil and a couple of his Jersey friends and... Oh, We're all a, a weird, obsessive family now. Yeah, to be a, a fly on the wall. Yeah. I wonder, so you, you recognize a, a kinship there yeah. in terms of uh, your own. Definitely, right. yeah, so, yeah. I mean, Jeremy's, you know, his whole body of work is, in a way, yeah. is, is about people with these kind of deep and unusual interests in things, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's obviously something that resonates with you. Definitely. Um, from, you know, the filmmaker, yeah. Henry Jaglum, to yes. Phil, to Al Carby, the Barbie yes. doll artist, to Matt Green, the walking freak, yep. you know? <laughs> you got, you got I, it all. I, I've got that corner. Yeah, yeah. That's my corner. But, yeah, so Matt fit, you know, so Matt and I were, were became, you know, we're friends for several years. Um, he had already been doing all these kind of cool walks, including this walk across the country, and I was always really intrigued by what he was doing his blog seeing it hearing about it seeing hanging out with Matt you know at dinner and hearing these stories that were so different from what my experience of New York was you know I had lived in New York I I live in New York and most of my adult life I've been in New York I was also born in New York and and I those experiences I never had um, went on my own and I and I had thought I knew the city and here was this guy who was just, all he was doing was walking around every street of New York City and seeing it in this whole different way that I was kind of blowing my mind just hearing up from him. And at that point, I started to get this little kernel of an idea that I should shoot it. Um, finally, Matt had already been on his walk in New York for about two years. And then I finally sort of finished up... Um, I think it was right around the time Magical Universe was being released. Um, 
it it was I, I sort of had a little lull where there was you know that movie was with with a distributor and they had plans and I didn't really you know I was kind of like on the sidelines just as they were doing their thing and I sort of reached out to Matt and said hey why don't I uh, come along and shoot and that sort of started this this process with us um, not where the big plan to make a, a documentary it was just really about he was doing something so interesting and I thought I wanted to check it out and film it and that is how we sort of started correct uh, you uh, the, you're, you you claim that the all this you, you're again the, 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 the goal is to walk every block in New York what? The, the goal is to walk every street in New York yeah. uh, to walk down the street of every including parks beaches, etc. You had estimated about 8,000 miles in this of, Yeah, of, of, I, uh, I ter- very roughly terrain. estimated it would take 8,000 miles. Right. So you had an idea of how long that might be yeah. potentially, right? And you walk yeah. almost every day, regardless of the weather. It, it's changed a lot, actually. And the, the early days of my walk was basically walk every day because I, that's basically all I was doing. Yeah. And as time's gone on, and I've been doing a lot more research and writing, yeah. that now dominates my time. Oh, the walking is interesting. Is, is a okay. Distinct minority of my so time. So it's interesting now. how it's morphed into this other yeah, thing. Yeah, it's very right. much changed over yeah. the, over the course of the years. Yeah, I kind of have that experience too. I mean, uh, I can relate. That's all I want. To say. Like in yeah. terms of what I'm doing here, that it keeps morphing into something. Right, that and I I'm discovering as I. Go and when you're and doing I'm your own thing, you can just kind of let it keep morphing. Yeah, you don't have to fit inside to the, the bounds of, of a job, for example, you know. Yeah. You just uh, let it kind of keep going to see right. where it ends up. But in a way, it's so funny because the more you walk, the more internal you get. Because you keep, you're deep in thought. And it keeps, it's almost like it's a, a form of almost like um, meditation. It yeah. Like. I mean, there's, you know, walking Except meditation. that you're meeting people, thing, too, so and yeah. talking to people um, But, also. you know. But there must be areas where you go where you don't talk to anybody. Echo yeah. For I mean, there's... You know, and you'll see a lot in the film. Yeah. You'll, you'll, I think especially for people, well, you know, I think it goes both ways, actually. People who haven't been to New York probably have an idea of what the city's like yeah. that's based on, you know, the parts that you would see on TV. Yeah. Um, and people who live in New York also probably have a, f- you know, many people have a pretty narrow view just because a normal person just travels a few corridors, you know, to different parts of, that are important in their life. And, yeah. and so, um, so in this film, you'll see just visually, you'll see yeah. places that are, you never would have thought her in New York. When, and it gives you, you a quick sense of, like, there's a, there's a lot of different stuff happening in the city. It's not a busy city. You know, all the city is not busy. No. Not even right, close. Right. The city is, by and large, little neighborhoods. That yeah, are exactly. That are quiet and work Exactly. And yeah, less. The, the things that you say don't look like New York, that's actually the majority of New York, you know? Yeah. When did you start the walk again? I Remind started me? basically New Year's Eve going into 2012. Oh, how so the very last minutes of, of the very last hours of 2011. That was the start of it. Okay, and all right. So t- right, okay, very good. I just started film wax around there. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> six yeah, it's been over six 2011. years. 2011. Yeah. How much have you walked then? I've walked. Oh, a, wait, let, let yeah. me take a baby step back. When you started the film, where were you at? Started the film was a little over two and a half years in. I don't remember right. where we I was. Started miles. on our first day of shooting was 9 11, 2014. I just remember because it was 9 11. We, we saw like a memorial service yeah, on a television on a in television. a building, in a house we walked by. Exactly. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, it's one, by the way, you bring up 9 11. Uh, there are there's some interesting themes that also seem to come out emerge, of, emerge from the, the walking. One yeah. is, is 9 11 and memorials. I don't know. I haven't made more. Sense of life in a way, you know, that was something that we saw a lot that, you know, Matt would be going and sometimes, you know, he'd walk by and be like, oh, this was a site of, you know, something historical, but it was often about life, you know, uh, the, you know, life and death and sort of, you know, big topics. It wasn't just, oh, right here is Radio City or Rockefeller Center or Carnegie Hall. It was much more about this kind of deeper sense of New York and its place in history in a way, you know. Yes, for sure. So you, you were, it was 2014 when you started the film. How much, do you remember, had you walked up to that point, roughly? I don't remember. Okay. I mean, proportionately, like, I was, you know, as I said, I was walking more often at the beginning. Okay. So, like, yeah. there were, you know, the first couple of years I covered a lot more miles than the, the more recent years. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't remember exactly where I was then, mileage-wise. Um, 
but, I, but where are you at now? Do you want me to tell you where I'm at now? I'm Please. at 8,571 miles. Okay, and you estimate that you are So I'm 90%. well over the 8,000 that I initially just kind of threw out Did there. Did you cross the 8,000 towards the end of the film? The making the film process? Or yeah. You, it was, yeah. That was kind of a late addition. Yeah. He you know, At one point, Matt said, oh, I'm going to cross 8,000. And I said, oh, we got to shoot it. And yeah, I mean, he had, he had pretty much shot everything that you see at that point. Yeah. And then there were just a few little things where, you know, he re- would run back out late in the process and grab something. And that was that was near the end of the, of the film, of the filmmaking. Jump in, Jeremy, as the director, because I wonder, here you're doing this very organic thing on your own for several years. And you're, you know, doing it all on your own and on your yep. own, uh, uh, w- uh, within your own design, how, where you're going to start and end the walk that day, that week, et cetera. Where you, and some of it happens to be where you're uh, spending night, the nights, mm-hmm. or you're, you know, where you're crashing at that during that time. It has some impact on your choices. But all of a sudden now you have the film intruding on this, and all of a sudden the organic nature becomes a, some potentially compromised a little bit, like in terms of what you're going to do yeah, for the fake sake show. of the. Yeah, the sake of the film. Yeah, that's was there a, that a was, quote unquote scripted nature at times? Is what is you? Can no, you, well, so so there was um, state you know, verite. Is that what you're trying the, to tell at me? At the beginning, of course, the thing that I was hesitant about was exactly that. Okay. just having someone else there, you know, kind of right. disturbing the process. Um, right, and then also your your connections on the streets and exactly that, all of that stuff. All that thing, stuff, yeah. and um, and there had been a couple of people who had come up to me before and like were kind of interested in shooting something, and I just was never comfortable with it. But oh. but just ha- knowing Jeremy, you know, knowing I could trust him, like right. knowing that he understood me on a deeper level, um, and having seen his last film, um, you know, Magical Universe, um, sure. kind of showed me that he has this ability to to kind of bring bring these deeper meanings out of something that that aren't immediately apparent. Right. Um, and so that, that, you know, made me a lot less hesitant. Um, and Jeremy, sh- you know, was amazing at being unintrusive. I mean, oh. given that there's a camera there recording things, he was there by himself, mm-hmm. running around with all the equipment and everything, you know, with okay. the one camera. Um, so, so you were a, a crew of one? A crew yeah, of one. It, it was. And it was, it was part of what we're talking about, which I didn't want there to be this big you know crew running behind matt so there was you know i didn't want there to be another sound guy another camera guy a pa so we just said okay we're not going to do that it's just going to be me and will you know uh, all if that means that we have to sh- i just have to shoot and shoot and shoot to get a lot of stuff then that's what we're going to do so you laved him up and uh and, laved and him so up the and, answer and kind and of the second part of your question please um, yeah. i mean the the vast majority probably 95 percent of the film is just Jeremy like I have the day free can I come walk with you and he would go wherever I was going so you know almost everything you're seeing is just whatever happened on whatever arbitrary day he came out with me and then you know toward the end there were things like oh I'm gonna cross 8,000 miles today you want to be there for that so there were a few parts like oh I mostly walk this neighborhood this will be my only day there you want to just just to cover the city you want to come out for that so it really was pretty given the fact that a film was made of it it was pretty unintrusive process um, and and I was pretty comfortable with it yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've, I've, um, we know that I, I work on a lot of films because I also do a lot of, you know, trailers and I, I do a lot of that for a lot of filmmakers and a lot of documentary. I work on a lot of documentary films in that capacity and work with a lot of filmmakers. And one of the things that I noticed with a lot of filmmakers when they were making films about their subjects, they had this kind of, you know, ha- you know, distance with their arms, distance with their subjects. And they were always, you know, nervous about their subjects. And a lot of huge documentary filmmakers, great filmmakers, like wouldn't don't even show the the film to the subjects. And they think that they're, you know, entitled to make a film and and keep them in the dark. And you hear these stories about some huge documentary where they are seeing the film for the first time, the subjects at the festival. And it was absolutely not what I wanted to do here with Matt. Um, you know, Steve James said in an interview, and it really resonated me, with me, that when he was making Abacus, which was nominated just for an Oscar, he said he, he was making a film with the, the family, not on the family. And that was something I was like, yeah, that's really what I felt with Matt, that Matt, I wanted to make a film with Matt and uh, not so much on him, where I, where I wanted him to sort of feel comfortable with the idea that there was a film ma- being made on him. But I don't know, having, you, having said that, I don't know that as an audience member, as a viewer, that I'm experiencing something different. It may be, it may be 
but even all these cases where somebody does take a kind of a much more distant t approach to their subject or they have that kind of relationship, off camp, whatever you want to call it, but less of a collaborative approach, yeah. that you, as a viewer we may still have the same connection to the film. It may be as successful either way. One is not necessarily more valid. Than I think the it's other. just a matter of. But it worked in this case clearly. Yeah, yeah it's ju important. it's just a matter of you know. Yeah. I mean, I guess it made me feel a little more invested in the film and like. Right. Yeah. You know. Right. Uh, maybe just more cooperative yeah. with him. Yeah, make Matt more cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> I also think Matt's you know Matt's really he's interesting you know and also in that he's not looking necessarily for publicity and he's not. He doesn't have much of an ego. So a lot of the subjects of documentaries, they're, you know, sometimes they're seeking publicity, and that wasn't a case with Matt. So Matt, you know, sometimes it, it, the idea, the impression I get with Matt, it's like, yeah, there's a movie on him? Yeah, it would be the same as if there wasn't a movie on him, you know? And I, So that just kind of making him comfortable, I think, was, was part of that process. And, well, we're here at South by Southwest uh, with you guys. And you just, uh, you've had two screenings already. Of the film, they sold out. Sold both out. And we, incredible. We, uh, Matt and I were. Uh, why are you laughing at this? It's funny. No, no, no. Oh yeah, yeah. For you. It got Matt pretty, and I it were got a little X-rated. Today, Matt and I were sold out of uh, of the movie, both of us. So we, you I found that you couldn't even go into no. the film. I sat on the floor during the screening, and I sat like up in. Well, you need a rest. Yeah, <laughs> you need a break. So that was um, okay. a cool experience. I'll probably remember for a while. That's which lovely to hear. Yeah. Uh, but they clearly. I'm going to guess, given now you've had two Q&As, right, that a lot of women are going to be asking questions. They're going to see two former girl, no, two per former w w subs women in your life that uh, you had two substantial relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Both of which, uh, I, the, the latter, is that, is that something that's ongoing? I'm, I'm, I, this doesn't have to be in the film. I mean in the podcast, but uh, we're, we're I only ask... No, we're very close. I, we're, I mean, we're not a, in a romantic relationship, okay. but but we've right. you know but we're very a, big parts of each other's it's lives. Played, it's played a, 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 a role in the make in the in the in the uh, complication that that uh, contributed to the difficulty in having a relationship. The walking, yeah. your, right, your, your right, goal. right. So, uh, do you not get questions from women in the audience saying, you know, kind of that? Nah. like, why are you, you know? We haven't yet okay, gotten any of those. All yeah, right, right. although they only well, do, it's only like a fifteen-minute Q and A, and then they throw you out short. of the theater. So. Yeah, they're pretty short. So you don't get a lot of questions. But, but I, I'm wondering what the themes are coming up in the in the Q and A's. Well, one thing just to add about the whole girlfriend thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, let's talk about Matt's you know I have personal to take this life. Call. Oh, one second, I apologize. Sorry, oh, put a pin in that. I apologize. Our interviewer is taking a call right now. Just so you know, <laughs> it's just the epitome of manners. This guy. <laughs> Sorry about that. We were talking. What are you talking? About about? Yeah, wait. It's okay. Back to my back to your your yeah your your girlfriends. Um, so, I, at one point during the mo the production, about you know maybe a year in, I started realizing that you know th we wanted to get to get de into deeper into Matt and into his his life and how the the walk was impacting him beyond just, you know, in a personal way. And I sort of made a real effort to find some of the ex-girlfriends. And I, I have a feeling that's a, a scene that a lot of people are really responding to. Just in terms of anecdotally, they really respond to that scene. Um, and it's not in a kind of a gossipy way. It's, it's really, it, you feel... The impact of his walk on a larger, on his person when you see these these two women. So it's something that I made an effort, and Matt was a little reluctant. What was your take on on with that? Oh man, I was like, let's just make the Good whole movie hosting. about my love life. That's <laughs> well. No, I it's, mean it's important for the audience because they, it gives us a, a a view into how you're affecting people around you. True. Like your parents are in it as well. Right. Right. You know. Yeah, I feel like uh, someone had said that, like, um, watching the movie is kind of like, as these questions arise in your head, you then see a scene that answers it, you know? Like, what kind, did this guy have a dysfunctional family? Like, was he thrown out of the house, at, you know, as a teenager? Like, why is, he, why is he this way? And then you see my parents, and, like, does this guy, like, how, can he have a romantic life? And then you see, like, an ex-girlfriend scene. So, so Jeremy kind of... You know, anticipated a lot of that, I think, and revealed things in a in an interesting way. As are you, you a solitary longer. person in the end of the day? I mean, are you? I'm, I am. I am a pretty solitary person. Yeah. Okay. I mean, do you want? 
in the abstract, do you I'm want I'm doing to? this interview from an isolation chamber it, well, you know, on the other true. side of town. That's just true. <laughs> but that, that's not infrequent on the show. And, you know, or at least after the first appearance. <laughs> right, because he has a bubonic plague. And <laughs> well, so. personality-wise, uh, <laughs> bubonic plague. So, okay, so you got uh, how many, where, where are you at with the walk now? So you say you've done 8,500 miles. 8,500. 8,500 out of 8,000. 8, 8, 8, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm more than 100. You know how sports stars always say I gave it 110%? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I've actually given it 110%. You've literally given 110%. Yeah. Percent almost, your, I'm almost there. By original estimation. Uh, so i got to get 8,800 so, for that. Well, though. because you do walk very conveniently for these other kind of areas of the city which are not quite so uh, uh, I don't know uh, um, registered in terms of uh, distance or what have you like uh, parks and beaches uh, yeah. are, 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 park, semi- say you like walk let's say a park let's say you're talking about the arteries I mean you, you're not talking about pathways or are you yeah when, you, when I walk a when park. you're walking in a park so let's say Prospect Park let's say uh, Corona Park Flushing Meadow Park, uh, Forest Park. I saw you in. I lived. Doing? I lived down the block. Oh yeah. Are you? Are you? You're. You're doing the arteries, the main. Dr- r- r- I kind of with with parks, with cemeteries, those kind of areas. Oh, I right. just kind cemeteries. of. I cover what I feel are like the zones of the park. I got it. So it can vary a lot. If it's a, if it's a hilly wooded park, I'll walk it more densely. Really? Because you can't necessarily see what's over the hill from where you are. Yeah. If it's like a giant collection of baseball fields, I'm not necessarily going to just walk through every baseball field because I can stand on the edge and kind of get a view of it. Yeah. So a lot of it's just visual. Right. Like, have I feel like I've kind of seen each area of the park. I see what you mean. Um, you're you're digesting the city. In a yeah. Sense, so because, you, wanna... it, you know, as you when you start walking, you realize how... You think it would be black and white, what's a street and what's not, but it gets very gray very quickly. Certain neighborhoods especially. There are private right? streets. There are Cul-de-sacs. things that used to be streets. Right. There, oh. are, there are things. There are streets that are really wide and have a median. Is that really two streets? Because you can barely see across it. It's so wide. And there's trees in the middle. You know, yeah. There's all kinds. Of, and same, so same thing with parks. Like You could try to walk every path, but you quickly run into the existential question of what is a path. Right. Uh, Who am I? So w- answer my question. Right before the question, which is like you can estimate roughly, maybe how much more do you have in this? I uh, could period. estimate it and be wrong if you'd like. I'll I'll well, say that's your track record. So. Uh, yeah, I'll say another five hundred to a thousand miles. Okay. Yeah. But um, so this is a ten thousand mile. Could be another, that could be another three years for Matt. Yeah. It, right. uh, so part of part of why I'm I have put no effort into really trying to nail down the mileage is because even though to anyone else this probably seems like an incredibly like anal obsessive thing to do Mm -hmm. in a way i'm fighting against a lot of my own tendencies which would be to like have to quantify everything to an exact degree and know exactly what i'm getting into and so i was kind of i didn't want to to take that approach to the uh, to the extent that i can avoid it with my personality and so um so i i intentionally just didn't even want to try to spend time figuring out exactly what was what when i started do you see a day though where you'll, you'll be able to say to yourself i'm done yeah. In, uh, I mean, okay. well, you know, or, I, I see a day when I could probably say the phrase I'm done, but it would have an asterisk because there's always new streets being built in New York. So I feel like, you know, maybe maybe every year on the anniversary of the completion of my walk, I'll walk whatever new streets have been built in the last year or something. Yeah. Until I die. Uh, then I'll stop. Okay, so you're saying... You know, there'll be the, probably the period between the final walk and when I die, like, it'll be seven months, and I won't have walked the new streets in those seven months, and I'm going to be a failure. <laughs> well, this is getting very existential indeed. Yeah. When you start thinking about that. One of, the, one of the neat things that I thought just when I started the movie was that, oh, Matt's walking every street, and that's what the movie is. And then I also... Our interviewer's phone is ringing it's right now. It's just blowing up. Adam's getting just a million calls during this. It's very professional. <laughs> so that <laughs> that Matt, um, you know, he's doing this. He's like, oh, okay, so he's walking every street. But that's really just kind of part of it. Um, it's this really deep, deep research side of it and that was something that was tricky to convey in a movie how do you convey somebody doing research you know that doesn't sound like a movie i want to watch but um it's research the movie (laughs) yeah but it's definitely a really key aspect to his whole project and it 
you know, it's an important aspect. So not only is he walking these streets, he as he's walking the streets, he's seeing things that catch his eye or his curiosity, and they could be something really small, like a street sign or a manhole cover. They could also be something huge, like, you know, Rockefeller Center or, you know, Carnegie Hall. So as he's doing that, he then is doing all this sort of research on everything that he's seeing. Um, so that was something tricky to convey in the movie. How do you, you know, yes, it's about the walk. Yes, it's about Matt as a person. But it's also this side of him where he is um, kind of doing this study and this really interesting study that's going to be really valuable to, the, to, to anyone who wants to dig into it. Where, where can people find all, all of your research and your blogging? Where, where's that? You, you can find all of my incredibly tedious research and blogging at imjustwalkin.com, right. where, where uh, very small facts are meticulously linked to sources and things like that. So, mm-hmm. if, you know, if you don't want to take my word for it, you can, you can click on the link. You, you know what's interesting? And you, you probably know this, Matt, but I don't think a lot of people would. If you go on Google... And you type in, you know, I don't know, New York manhole covers. Matt's site usually is one of the first sites that comes up on those searches. Mm -hmm. You know, New York bridge. You know, if you type in a specific bridge. And it has to do with uh, not not all of them, but the specific ones. Yeah, like if there's a specific bridge or specific street. But I kept on just being kind of sort of shocked that your website was often on the first page of Google on some Google search mm-hmm. on something specific in New York. And I well, think he's got that's an a, SEO guy. What's that? He's got an SEO guy. Yes. <laughs> Somebody's working the SEO. So I think that is a testament to this side of his project that's really ambitious, but also really meticulous and, and sure. uh, yeah. you, know, you know, has right. that side to it. Sure. Yeah. Well, again, the, the documentary... It's called The World Before Your Feet, directed by Jeremy Workman. It's at South by Southwest right now. It, is there, uh, what's next, I guess? Is the World After Your Feet. That'll be the sequel. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Before and after. Funny man Matt Green here on the <laughs> podcast as well. But uh, what, what um, do you, is there, are there more festivals? First there, of all. There's definitely more festivals. Okay. Where, where, this is just the beginning. You know, this I is mean, just the beginning. We're, we're oh. very excited to be here. We've really concentrated our mm-hmm. efforts on South by this is where we wanted to be. We had reached out to the, you know, all the, um, the, the festival almost a year ago, um, ta- not, not, you know, a while ago to really sure. share the film with them. So we're really excited about South by, but we also know that, um, this is a movie that we think is going to connect with a lot of people. I agree, and, yes. um, we are excited by that. There's other festivals definitely interested in. We haven't announced any yet, but, um, we're going to certainly have a, a fun experience kind of traveling with it, I think, going to a lot of, of festivals, regional festivals. This is the kind of movie I think that audiences really appreciate watching. It's spread, not Spread out the festivals because, you know, Matt will he probably, could. He needs to walk. What? He's got... Uh, <laughs> what do you, I want to... What do you that say? reminded me he... he we were at one point joking that Matt should walk to South by Southwest, but right. he did not. Um, but we Probably are going to be idea. spreading out the festivals because I think this is, you know, what's neat about the, the movie also it, is it, it it's, it's audience friendly in a different way than I think a lot of audience friendly movies. It's very communal. I, I guess that's probably the best way I can say it. It feels like a movie that um, a that the community of an audience is going to really enjoy this idea. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Not, not in a way that like, oh, yeah, every movie, you know, does well when there's an audience. It's, it's a, I think that the, some of the themes of, in the movie are about this community. So what you're saying mm-hmm. is you would like audiences to come and see the movie. <laughs> so it's a unique concept. <laughs> Man. <laughs> you're, you're pitching audiences right yes. now uh, to come and see yes. the film. It's a good tactic. <laughs> I am not, uh, yes, I am. I am shamelessly pitching audiences to no, see it's, the movie. Uh, I I back that up. I uh, it's a it's a highly entertaining, watchable film, and it's yeah. I think it, it explores a really human humanity. Yeah, our humanity. Yeah, yeah. I agree. 
All righty. Well, that about does it. <laughs> 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 that was a clumsy ending to the conversation, but thank you both. You for want me to call you so your phone rings again? <laughs> <laughs> I would like you to go get my computer. <laughs> Fuck the phone. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, and, uh, man. You have another one more screening? Is that what's going we on? We have another screening on Wednesday. Right. We, uh, yeah. okay. Matt is doing a, a public walk here at South By. Oh, that's smart. Okay. And he's going to lead a group on tomorrow. And oh, really? He's going to take him on a Matt Green walk. Even though he this is the first time he's been to Austin, it's about uh-huh. just kind of... Do you know what that looks like then? Like what that walk would look like? I mean, just curious. Or is it? Planned? I mean, I have Did a I have a route, okay, but right. I don't know what the route looks like really. I understand. So we'll okay. find out. How long is that? Lo- that walk will be seven miles. Seven. Yeah. What time? Starts at nine a.m. Okay. And you'll at, be back around eleven thirty. At the 30? convention center, at one corner of the convention center that I don't know which one okay. off the top of my head. Uh, and you're back by eleven thirty or something. Seven miles. No. Yeah. 11? How long it, does it's it take slow. It's slow. You know, we stop, sure, we look around, we talk, we take pictures. So okay. we've all, and we'll have to take the bus back into downtown unless I can convince other people with me to walk back. Got it. Oh, so you're walking seven miles out? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not a little stroll. I'm going to be trying to talk people into keep going. But right? It'll probably That's be seven miles. It's an old Jewish miles. joke, right? It's like, uh, you know, or old, old guy joke where he goes to his doctor He's, the guy's not well, and he goes to his doctor, and he says, Doctor, what should I do? He goes, Doctor says, w- walk two miles a day and call me in two weeks. And so the guy calls, and two weeks later, the doctor says, how are you doing? He says, much better, but I'm, like, you know, 14 miles or, or whatever, <laughs> like, you know, lost them. Anyway, um, that wasn't a great telling of Wait, the Wait, one thing I was going to add is, you know, wow, South by Southwest, while we were sitting here, I, there's been a little bit of, of a parade of, of uh, celebrities and stars right in front of us. Yeah. Uh, there was Jim Gaffigan walked right by us. No, he did. Yes, he did. Barry Jenkins, the director of he Moonlight, walked right by us like things. minutes ago. So there's been. Yeah, um, I could have tripped him. Yeah, and 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 Matt Green, of course. Of course, Jim Gaffigan. Yeah, right, just right in front of us. I wish I known that. Literally, I've like been a fan. while you know we were Why cracking jokes, he was you know right right here. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm saying put. put. <laughs> while you're on the phone, <laughs> guys, thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure meeting you.